and welcome to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. We are local talk radio broadcasting here in Fairbanks on 660 on your AM dial and around the world at KFAR660.com. I am Steve Floyd, the monkey behind the machine. Joining me here in the studio today from Bighorn Enterprises, one of our sponsors, we have Josh Bennett. Good morning, Josh. Good morning, Steve. And to his left, my right, we have uh, Dave Giesel from the Campaign for Liberty. Good morning, Dave. How are you? Hey, Steve. How's it going? And also, I'm, I'm just going well. On the phone this morning, we have a special guest calling in. We have Jeff Berwick with the Dollar Vigilante. Good morning, Jeff. Are you there? Good morning. That's uh, quite the intro. You got me all pumped up here. Well, I want to go out and throw, overthrow a government. <laughs> uh, well, we, we, we don't advocate for anything violent here, Jeff. No, but, no, I didn't mean it violently. <laughs> through educational means. Education. Yeah. <laughs> In a sense, we have to overthrow the shackles in our own mind before we can do anything else effectively on the outside. Uh, I have no idea why you invented you invited Jeff to come on the show today, Dave. So why don't yeah, you go so, ahead and introduce what's going on? Um, I met uh, Jeff at the recent Casey Summit called When Money Dies, which was a very optimistic and rosy <laughs> <laughs> summit. Well, and actually, in ways it was. Um, I think Jeff's presentation was, was really good there. So um, I invited him to come on because... Uh, he's doing stuff that kind of answers the the question of, well, what do we do now? You know, what do we do about this? And um, he's got a newsletter, uh, The Dollar Vigilante, and he's got a YouTube channel, um, The Anarchast, which is a, a show he's doing, and we'll uh, we'll get to those a little bit later. Um, but the main thing I wanted to talk about first was, um, Jeff, what is your take uh, as somebody who's been observing this stuff on kind of the political and ec- economic situation that we have in um uh, the United States, North America, and is it beyond reform, and, and what's going to happen? What's your take on that? Well, the first thing that comes to mind when I see what's going on is what a big mess. <laughs> it's, you know, I was just listening to your uh, your news intro there, and it's, you know, drone strikes around the world, and people are are rallying and then protesting around the world, and, and this Occupy Wall Street people and all this. and But then when you listen to a lot of the Occupy Wall Street people, they're all a lot of them are actually asking for more government. Uh, they're asking that the government actually uh, fix the problems caused by all this government problems. So it's just sort of a big mess. And I think it's all originated from the fact that we're all brainwashed. Uh, we've all been brainwashed since birth, basically. Um, you know, we've been put into the government schools, which are just indoctrination centers, for 12 years, which is which is literally insane. It's you know, Vladimir Lenin said that if you give me your child for four years. The seed I sow will never be uprooted. He never would have imagined having them for 12 years. And then you put them into another four or eight years if you want to get some sort of master's or doctorate degree. You're talking 16 to 20 years of indoctrination because a lot of those colleges are all teaching very status views as well. So, And then when those people go home and they turn on the TV, especially in the U.S., all the media is one and the same with the government, basically. And they're basically just parroting, the, again, the status sort of uh, – perspective on things. So everyone is very brainwashed, and they actually don't teach us anything uh, about reality in school. So uh, you can hear this with all the Occupy Wall Street people. They're all very confused. They don't really know what's going on because they haven't been taught. They don't even know how the money system works and this entire financial system. That's never taught in school because if that was ever taught, uh, people would have... uh, had a revolution a long time ago because it's, it's a completely artificial, non-free market financial system run by the Federal Reserve and all those sort of things. So, yeah, when I look at what's going on out there today, I just think, what a big mess. How are we going to get through this? Because a, a lot of people are very unhappy and a lot of people are, are very angry, uh, but they don't really even know why or who to be angry at. So hopefully through programs like uh, Patriots Lament and, and things through the Internet, hopefully we can help to educate some of these people so they can at at least get angry at the right people. Yeah, that's a really interesting point. We had a uh, local assemblyman on last week, um, and we we kind of pitched these ideas at him. That we, st- we also ganged up on him, Dave. Well, to be yeah, honest. but but like the idea that public schools were indoctrination centers and and just things like that, and he'd he'd never been exposed to those ideas before. Um, his reaction was, you know, he, he just didn't know how to respond to a lot of that. So so people really haven't um, heard a lot of this stuff before, even though. You know, guys like us, you know, we've been talking about the Federal Reserve and things like that for years. There's a lot of people out there who just have don't have a clue about it yet. Yeah, that's totally the case. And uh, 
you could see it every day. Most people just don't know any of this stuff. But thanks to the Internet, you know, the Internet's been around since 1994, really. That was when it really sort of took off or started to get going. And, and most people knew about it by around 98 or 99. So we've had about 10 years now where people have had at least the opportunity to get access to this information because before the Internet, you really couldn't. Uh, the government's made sure there was no Ludwig von Mises or Murray Rothbard's books in any of the libraries. Uh, you know, you would never get on, a person like myself would never get on mainstream media in the U.S. I'm far too dangerous. I speak about the truth and reality and, and that sort of a thing. So before the Internet, we had no chance. Uh, to figure this stuff out. And the people who did figure it out, I really respect, because I don't know how they did it uh, before the Internet. But now that we have it, uh, there really is no excuse anymore. Uh, before you could say, oh, well, you know, they were brainwashed and, and they had no access to this information, so how could the majority of people figure it out? But now you have no excuse for being ignorant. Uh, you you have to at least admit, if you don't know this stuff now, that uh, you've, you've uh, got issues or you're trying to avoid it or you're or you're just not uh, very good at thinking uh, but uh, uh, in general though uh, I think we do have a chance here to educate people a lot and and uh, but I also think that the governments uh, see that and that's why you hear about things like the internet kill switch a lot nowadays mm -hmm. uh, you know it really wouldn't surprise me to see well they're already doing it they're already censoring so many things uh, you know we're, we're sort of under attack here on the internet this is the last free uh, place on earth and uh we really need to protect that because if we lose this i think uh, all hope is lost yeah well speaking of of the internet um while it's still unregulated um you want to tell us about some of the stuff you're doing online uh, educationally sure well i write a uh, newsletter called the dollar vigilante and that's at dollarvigilante.com and um I write a free blog on there. You can subscribe to our blog. I write almost daily about these sort of things. And the newsletter itself, we write about uh, what's going on. The whole newsletter's concept is to survive uh, the uh, collapse of the financial system, which is ongoing right now. And that's uh, why we're seeing a lot of the problems in the world today that we are, uh, all these riots and protests and all that. That's all just symptoms of the collapse of this fiat currency system, which has really only been in place for just over 40 years now. And uh, so I write a lot about that sort of thing. I also write about things like expatriation. Uh, I'm not uh, super positive about what's going to be happen happening in the U.S. over the next couple of years. And I think if you have the opportunity to leave and you have the mindset to do so, I think that's not a bad idea. I think that's a, uh, a decent idea. I, I personally have done that. I, I, I'm, I'm actually Canadian. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, from... Uh, place called Edmonton, which gets very cold, and my dad's actually from the Yukon, so I, uh, I quite know the Alaska-style lifestyle. My, my dad's, a funny story, my dad's actually from a place in Canada that was the coldest uh, uh, recorded temperature ever in Canada. It was something like minus 70-something. Yeah, I guess uh, you can't complain then. Yeah, well, I'm sure you've gotten close to there, but anyway, um, he was telling me that uh, they, they hit that at about minus 70, and the next day it was only about minus 30, and everyone was walking around in T-shirts with their uh, car windows rolled down. So <laughs> just goes to show the uh, how people can adapt to anything. But, um, yeah, so I, I read about these sort of things. And then I also have a program called Anarchast, and, and that's basically Anarchy Podcast. Uh, I'm an anarchist, uh, you can call it, or you can say anarchy, uh, anarcho-capitalist uh, is um, is another word for it. Uh, it basically just means that you you don't believe we need government and um, and you believe in freedom. And so I write that. So that's just at anarchast.com. And uh, every uh, few days we have a new video up where we interview uh, free free minded people. And we had you, David Giesel, on uh, just last week uh, on on anarchast.com. If people want to go go there and see that. Yeah, one of the things I really like about um, anarchast is that it it distills down what you know, the voluntary um, anarcho-capitalist movement is all about. You know, it used to be that when you told somebody, you know, oh, I'm an anarcho-capitalist, they would just react, and there's no way to explain it to them. I was like, well, go read these 10 books by Murray Rothbard, and then you'll know what I'm talking about. And now um, you've really created a, uh, a resource there where people who are curious about this can just go and watch these YouTube videos where you have guys like Doug Casey and Lou Rockwell and Stefan Molyneux uh, talking about what what this really means, you know, organizing society around peaceful interaction instead of organizing it around the gun, um, and so I think that's a a really valuable resource. Yeah, thank you. That's basically the reason I did it, and this reason I did the Dollar Vigilante as well. I'm trying to help to educate the younger generations because 
if you go to a lot of these sort of uh, freedom-minded conferences and all that sort of stuff, you see that most of the people are quite older. Uh, they're in their 50s or 60s or 70s or 80s, and, um, and that's great, but uh, you don't see a lot of younger people. You see some now, thanks to the Internet, uh, but you don't see a lot, and you, and you can see it right with these Occupy Wall Street. I've been watching so many of these sort of man on the street interviews, and just hearing what they say, it's just it's painful, but it's also funny to, to listen to. They just they have no clue about anything. They've just and you know that that's their 16 years of public education for them, right? Uh, they really just, just have no idea what's going on, and so uh, I, I started doing these uh, anarchy podcasts as a way just to to educate people, just to get the word out there about what it is. Because if you talk to a lot of people and you bring up the word anarchy, they've been trained by the government and the media to think that's a really bad, dangerous thing. Of course, because the government doesn't want uh, anyone to, to to know what we know that they, that we don't need the government. And uh, or at least we don't need a government anywhere near as big as what it is today. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I actually personally believe we don't need them at all. But uh, there's other people called minarchists who believe we just need a very a tiny government, which is fine. I could live with that. Uh, but I think it'd be even better without any government at all. Uh, and uh, so yeah, I just try to get the word out there because uh, it is there is a war going on for your mind right now, and the, and the governments have all the resources because they take all of our money, so they they can do so many things that we can't. But thanks to the internet, uh, we can uh, get stuff like this out there a lot easier. And uh, you know, I'm really starting to see uh, this uh, taking off quite a bit. I'm seeing just an incredible growth. Uh, because as soon as people find out about this stuff and read a few, a few books about it, uh, it really uh, gets them excited because it shows them that because you, you get the sense from a lot of people nowadays that things are sort of hopeless. And they are hopeless under the current financial structure and this a horrible political structure that we have with just government involved in every facet of your life. It's, it's the most, we've never been less free as humanity in history than we are right now. We're basically living in uh, 1984 type times right now, the book 1984. And I was thinking about that when I, when I was listening to your, your news uh, intro. You know, all this stuff, it sounds like almost futuristic, like like what we would have thought of, like the book 1984, uh, like a few decades ago. I was listening to uh, uh, drone bombings in Yemen today, and you know, just all the things that that sounded really surreal in the past. We're living in it now, and uh, so it's really important that we, that we uh, try to get the word out there because uh, you know this is all these sort of status things, they never work out. And it just turns into basically slavery. And uh, even that's collapsing right now. So the U.S. government is in a state of collapse right now. A lot of people don't see that, but that's the case. It's it's beyond indebted. It it has to collapse in one way or another. And so uh, one way or another, it's going to collapse. And so if we don't educate enough people uh, about the uh, opportunities or the options they have in terms of political structures and government, then they'll probably just end up building another government again and doing all the same things and going down all the same roads and then we'll be enslaved again for another 30 or 40 or 50 years till it all collapses again. And and so just because I want to live in a decent world, <laughs> I kind of do these things and, and just hope that some people listen and, and maybe we can at least uh, uh, get some uh, traction as far as uh, non-status point of views. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to have to go live on a seastead or... <laughs> somehow get into outer space at some point to get off this planet. Yeah, that's what Doug says, right? we got to get off planet if we're going to... 